We had Bishop Strickland, uh, and he will always be a bishop in the Catholic Church. He will, for as long as he is alive, be an inspiration to all faithful Catholics. The idea that we, we're, we're managing some kind of progress is a complete fallacy. And I think one of the things that Christians need to say is to call time on this constant idea that politicians uh, are taking us forward in some kind of improved way. Christians have to say that actually we're, we're going into decadence, we're, we're collapsing, we're, we're rotting from the inside. And really, uh, we, we have to have the confidence that only Christ can renew the Holy Spirit to stop people into individually, societally rotting from the inside. It's a terrifying prospect. It almost makes me want to cry every day I wake up. I feel, if only I, I'd like to have become a Catholic under JP too, I could at least have enjoyed myself and <laughs> celebrated all the strength, the strength and the vigor of what it is. You know, now I've discovered that what the Catholics told about the church and the sacraments uh, was true. It would have been nice to enjoy it. Um, but the thing is, it, it, there's a line in The Lord of the Rings when Frodo and Sam, I think, complained to Gandalf that they, they wished they hadn't been born at this time and they could have had a quiet and comfy life in the Shire. Well, you know, my conversion to Catholicism was at this time. Uh, and, and one of the things I can bring is, a, is, is an insight into the dreadful mistake of secularizing Protestantism that the Anglican uh, experiment has engaged in. I mean, it's just disastrous in so many ways. Um, and, and what's astonishing to me is that the people who, the, the heterodox leaders within the Catholic Church are pressing for to, to go on a journey that's already been taken. It's already destroyed one, you know, one whole church. <laughs> and it's astonishing to me that they can't, you know, they won't see that. They haven't, they, or, you know, is it that they won't or they can't? We don't know. But the truth has to be told for those who are willing to listen. Give us a summary on your take on Pandora's box. Well, it was a very good book indeed, and, and all the better for being simple uh, and punchy and clear. It set out to answer some, some questions, and it did it uh, in a way that wasn't pseudo-intellectual. It did it in a way that everybody could understand. I, I was very proud to have been quoted at the beginning of it, and also a friend of mine, Monsignor Nazia Ali, who is a far more uh, um, prominent bishop th than, than I was, and indeed um, should have been Archbishop of Canterbury. He also uh, became a, a Catholic, and he also brings with him a, 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 a very clear and cogent analysis of what happens if you go down the path of relativism uh, and, and effectively what we're talking soft Marxism. So the, the, the book, in a simple and straightforward way, asks all the questions people should be asking and gives them the answers. Uh, it's, in, it's impossible that anyone reading that book in good faith wouldn't be shocked and astonished and say, OK, we have to stop going down this road. It, it, it goes straight over a cliff. And we owe it to our Lord and to the rest of the church not to be that stupid and that self-destructive. I mean, all, all credit to the authors who did such a good job. It's not not easy to write the truth clearly and accessibly. They did, but people have to read the book to understand what's going on. The way in which society is decaying fast, people are, instead of coming to the aid of their neighbour, they're just filming their neighbour's destruction. Uh, it seems to me that we've, we've passed a tipping point. There the, the was a shared understanding of the sanctity of human nature and the, uh, the, the imperative that you need to look after your neighbour. Um, the moment that goes, and it's, it's at the heart of the Christ, a Christian understanding of humanity and society, the moment that goes, you're into barbarism. So it's quite clear from, <laughs> from some of the videos we see that many uh, American cities have slipped way over into barbarism. Um, the glue that holds us together is, is, is free speech, freedom of conscience, and as you know only too well, that's being attacked on all sides. So, I mean, I, I, I think the next five years are going to be really very difficult and the dystopian possibility of what lies beyond that, I think, are really very alarming. But God has given us our lives to witness to him at this time um, and to struggle with witness and prayer, uh, evangelism and sanctity. So we're, we're in a fight. Um, and uh, just we ought to know we're in a fight and take the right precautions accordingly. Okay, so we've, we've talked a little bit about the bad stuff that's going on. We've even touched on, you know, the reality, the harsh realities of a di growing division within the church, Holy Mother Church. What do you think the lay folk ought to do in response to all of that? Well, I think they need to talk to their neighbors about Jesus. Um, the, 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 the good side of all this, as society 
unglues itself as more pagan and more violent and more disordered. Um, people's longing for God, uh, longing for heaven, longing for salvation, longing for holiness deepens and accentuates. And I think there comes a point where what, what, what we as laity can do, can say to our, our neighbours, it doesn't have to be like this, um, and to share the vision of, of the Christian way of being. Um, so in a sense, the worse society gets, the more the more our message and our experience of God is needed by our neighbours. But we have to have sufficient courage and clarity to be able to tell them about it. And for some time now, we've been we've been demoralised on all sides by people trying to shut us up, and we have to overcome that demoralisation. Bishop Strickland's getting the, the, the forced retirement treatment, and Rupnik, he's being rehabilitated at the Vatican. This is the most bizarre times ever, it seems to me. Well, I think it's part of the decadence of the church. I mean, the idea that Rupnik can be rehabilitated by his pals, his cronies, after the most explicit <laughs> sexual abuse of, of, of our sisters in Christ is mind-boggling. And it just goes to show, I think, the level of corruption that there is in Rome. I don't say that with any satisfaction. I say it with, with shame and alarm. Um, but but, but um, we had Bishop Strickland, and one of the things we can do is to celebrate him and pray for him. Uh, and he will always be a bishop in the Catholic Church, whether they remove him to a non-diocese or not. Uh, he, will, he, he will, for as long as he is alive, be an inspiration uh, to, to all faithful Catholics. So there are more Bishop Stricklands out there. God will raise them up, and we have them. And um, you know, we, we just have to be grateful for him and recognize the difference between decadence and holiness and celebrate holiness. Fulton That's Sheen okay. reminded us that, that there would come a point when uh, it was up to the laity to help priests be priests, bishops to be bishops. The moment has come. We, we have to encourage our bishops to be, to be more afraid of God and shame than they are of a hostile culture uh, and, and to, to, to find the courage to look after the sheep. But the laity yeah. have to do that. We've got to provide enough support, enough articulation. We've got to demand in the nicest possible way that they, they exercise and fulfill the responsibility of their post. I think if we can provide them with that expectation, they may just find the courage to fulfill it. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.